Okay. Um, so basically, what we're going to do is run a simulated search and rescue scenario. And we're leveraging a remote operations capability called Remote Flight Deck. And it's used today by US-based public safety and domestic users um, for DFR and other applications. So it's really speaking to a innovation that's actually deployed as a capability today. Um, so I'm starting Remote Flight Deck. You see the screen here. You see this is our SE organization, the, the vehicles we have. I'm going to click on an X10 here. Um, which enables me to, to select a, a vehicle that's already up. And setting the scene a bit here, um, you've got to imagine this a bit with me, but we're going to join a special operations unit on what would equate to a cultural engagement mission. Um, in this instance, theater ISR, so a large uh, medium altitude asset uh, that you know, can see and provide situational awareness at a large scale, is lost visibility due to cloud layers, which is actually accurate today, and on a four-person team in a semi-rural area. Um, the team reported receiving small arms and RPG fire from multiple locations, and during this, one operator was separated from the team. From the mission plan, if unable to communicate um, or locate the team after taking fire, operators will look to ID and move to a, a safe location. So I'm playing uh, the role of base operations here. It's a, it's a stretch, but that's what I'm doing today. And we are roughly 265 miles away from where the drone actually is. So I know that there's an organic asset, which is this, um, in the vicinity, and we're going to provide some search and rescue uh, on this. So I'm going to go into the fly screen here. You'll see. Max screen here. And, and yeah, and so because we're in national airspace and this is, we're going to commandeer it, and then I have remote ID, uh, which is, a, you know, complying with FAA, and we have a vi visual observer that's on my comms here. That's why I have uh, the that earbud here. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple settings here. Doing the system check, going to up some speed so it's not slow, bit rate so it's a bit cleaner, and now we're ready to launch. So I'm gonna launch this vehicle, and I'm doing this live, not pre-recorded. I'll probably fumble it up a bit, so it'll be accurate. Pay no attention to the, the house. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna gain some altitude. So the first objective in this is to locate a small bridge, which was one of the last known, known locations of this, this group. Um, and we're gonna get to about 150 feet AGL, which is roughly-ish the height we're at today in this building. All right, so that one of the key advantages of the X10, and I'm controlling this with a mouse here, see a bridge. I actually don't have to fly over here because I have pretty good optics. I'm zooming in pretty closely here. This is not even max. And it just, you're seeing a little jitter here, but there's actually about 25 mile per hour winds right now. So this is a pretty stable image for that. Um, so we don't see a truck here. So the next, the next thing, um, so we're looking for a truck, I forgot to mention, and, and the local operator may have commandeered a truck and placed a small US flag in that truck. Um, and if we don't find a truck, we're gonna look for a person on foot. So, we know the objective was to go down this road, so we're gonna, we're gonna fly a bit down this road. And the way I'm controlling this too, it's, this drone is actually flying on the local cellular network, so it's actually not physically connected to a ground station. Um, and we are able to control it over our remote flight deck. So we're flying down here, we don't see anything of note. The next objective uh, location would be to look for a safe location for this operator. And this, this space over here looks like it could be. Never done this before, just you know, not rehearsed at all. All right, so again, we're, we're using an organic asset to do a search and rescue. And, and for folks in the room, I'm sure you've done, folks have done some search and rescues, and this is maybe roughly looking like it, or, or you guys are much more organized than I am. But, we're, because this, this drone allows us to do a lot of things um, organically and then with you know, a, very, a very dialed uh, sensor system, we can do things pretty quickly. So that looks like it might be a truck. We're gonna go zoom in a bit. I see a truck there, door open. Um, we're gonna go investigate a bit further. And with the thermal um, that we were highlighting earlier, if this truck's been running, um, we should see a little bit of heat uh, off Difference off this uh, the truck hood there, 
if the car's been soaking in the sun for a while, it may not show as much, or if the car's been off for a while. We do see that looks like it's a little hotter at this point here in the front area, and then the door is open. So we're going to get low, and something that's great about Skydio, um, I mentioned you know, our obstacle avoidance earlier. We saw it in demonstration. I'm not really concerned about what's down here. I'm not going to hit anything. Um, it's very hard, if not impossible, to crash a Skydio drone when you're, if you're, excuse me, if you're trying. Um, so we can get really close to this and really look inside to see if there's any signs of, signs of distress or someone actually inside. Um, and we can again use our zoom if we need to. Pretty close, nothing there. Let's see if we can see a flag. That looks like a flag to me. So the intel was good. So, okay, so the next step is we, we gotta find our operator, he's still missing. Um, so he's well trained um, and experienced in this sort of scenario. So he's gonna look for a, a woods area or somewhere where he's semi obfuscated from any unfriendlies and that we can find him from the air. So I'm gonna pop up again. Again, I'm not really concerned what's above me because our obstacle avoidance will dodge anything. And this looks like a good woods here. So it's pretty hard to search woods like this, especially with you know, the colors that troops typically wear and what we're looking here. But if I twist to thermal, hmm, that looks like a guy wandering or maybe lost. I think we can get a little closer. And he's not gonna be able to hear us, but one of his things is, because we're pretty high right now, we're about 200 feet AGL, uh, if we get low and he hears us and he sees it friendly, he's gonna wave. So I can go, now that I found him on thermal, I can go to the optical and do our fancy zoom again. Not even all the way. That looks like one of our operators. So I'm gonna get a bit closer. Go back. And again, this is all what we call tele operation, so uh, it's not a pre-planned mission, though those are possible as well. I'm gonna get a little lower and see if he starts waving at me. Oh, yep, there he is. There's, we found Chase. Nice outfit, Chase. Awesome, so we completed our mission, and uh, you know, in, in either case, we could, we could land in there, dodge, dodge some obstacles, he can catch it, or we can just return home. Um, given the winds and things, I think it's probably smarter just to return home, It'd just be quicker. Um, but Chase now knows where to go, and this, you know, end scene, but this is his property, so he's not actually lost. <laughs> it's been a good sport, thanks Chase. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna return now, and basically, it's gonna take, go back to where it took off, which we did a big circle. So yeah, so this is you know, a demonstration of what's capable with our remote operations, and I, I demonstrated it over cellular network again, so we're using the local cell. Um, we also have our dock, dock systems, if you've seen that or heard of that, which basically houses a drone that can recharge, take off, land, and there's a direct connection between the dock and, and the drone. So it, it leverages our same remote flight deck capabilities and everything we just demonstrated here, same controls, and you can do pre-planned missions. So really is showing the future kind of already in use today. Um, this drone's in Ohio, we're flying it right now. Um, almost easier than what Taylor just did. So pretty cool technology that's being utilized across the US today. <laughs>